When it comes to your hair, there's several things that you can do to make it healthier, thicker, and even grow faster, such as hair mask and other topical treatments. But the truth is that there's no topical treatment that's gonna work for you in the long term if you have an underlying nutritional deficiency that's linked to hair loss and hair thinning. And so that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kayla and welcome. So as we age, many people notice that their hair is not as thick or as healthy as it used to be when they were younger and you know we start to accept that as a natural part of aging but that's not always the case in fact hair thinning and abnormal hair loss could be linked to an underlying nutritional deficiency so the good news is that it's not permanent and it can be fixed once you correct that underlying deficiency so in today's video I'm gonna talk about the five most common nutritional deficiencies that can be linked to hair thinning and hair loss the first one is an iron deficiency and this one is especially important for women who still have their monthly cycle so with an iron deficiency, your body lacks enough iron to produce proper amounts of red blood cells. And these cells carry oxygen around your body and into your tissues, which allows them to function optimally. So what happens is that when you're short on oxygen or hemoglobin, your body starts to prioritize its supply to your most vital organs instead of your hair follicles because it's trying to keep you alive. And as a result, your hair follicles are no longer able to function optimally and this can lead to temporary hair loss. So whenever I hear women complaining about losing too much hair, the first thing I tell them to do is get their iron levels checked. So if you find that your iron levels are low, one of the quickest ways to get those levels up is to consume foods that are rich in hemi-iron because it's the most absorbable form of iron and it's going to be in things like your red meats, seafood, chicken, eggs, things like that. Now if you are a vegan, you can still get your iron levels up with non-hemi-iron plant-based foods, uh, but what I would suggest is to consume those with foods that are rich in vitamin C because vitamin C increases the absorption of iron. So some plant-based options would include things like lentils, chickpeas, spirulina, and even your dark leafy greens like spinach. Now when it comes to supplementation, I don't necessarily recommend isolated synthetic iron supplements. It does work for some people, but not for everybody. And if you're trying to go with the more natural approach, then I would suggest getting a high quality grass-fed beef liver or beef spleen supplement. Both of those are super high in iron and they're whole food extracts. So your body is gonna recognize them and absorb them a lot better. Another deficiency that could be linked to hair thinning and hair loss is an iodine deficiency. Iodine and your thyroid health go hand in hand. In fact, iodine is essential in the production of thyroid hormone. So when you go to the doctor and you get your thyroid levels checked, go ahead and get your iodine levels checked as well because an iodine deficiency could be one of the underlying causes of hypothyroidism. And thyroid hormone helps to control Control the growth of hair follicles so if you're not producing proper amounts of thyroid hormone then it can lead to hair thinning and hair loss and to make sure you're producing enough thyroid hormone you need to make sure that you have proper levels of iodine of course one of the best sources of iodine is seaweed personally I like to snack on those little roasted seaweed snacks that you get from the store but if you don't like the taste of seaweed you can always get a high quality kelp supplement and by the way I will link all the supplements that I mentioned in this video for y'all in the description box below the next deficiency that can be linked to hair thinning and hair loss is a vitamin D deficiency. The reason for this is because vitamin D plays a critical role in stimulating new and old hair follicles. So when vitamin D levels are low, it can actually stunt new hair growth. In fact, vitamin D deficiency has been linked to alopecia, which is an autoimmune condition where your immune system starts to attack your hair follicles, and this can lead to bald patches in the scalp. So what can you do to make sure you're getting proper levels of vitamin D. Number one, you can get direct sunlight exposure. Obviously use common sense, you know, don't burn your skin. That's the last thing you want to do, but you need it to be direct sunlight. So no lotions or sunscreens because that can actually affect the, the production of vitamin D. Um, but just a few minutes a day or a few times a week is great for most people. Um, in terms of food, pasture-raised egg yolks contain a small amount of vitamin D, fatty fish like salmon, even sardines, cod liver oil, which you can also get in supplementation form. Also, the vitamin D drops are great because they're submerged in some sort of oil base, which is important because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. I'll list my favorite vitamin D drops for y'all below, as well as my favorite cod liver oil supplement. The next deficiency is a B12 deficiency. So a B12 deficiency is very similar to an iron deficiency in how it affects your hair follicles. And this is because B12 is also an essential nutrient when it comes to making red blood cells and carrying oxygen to your hair follicles. 
follicles. And as I stated earlier, if your hair follicles are not receiving proper blood supply, oxygen, and nutrients, then it could affect new hair growth and possibly lead to hair thinning. So some foods that are high in vitamin B12 are gonna include pasture-raised egg yolks, wild-caught sardines, grass-fed beef liver and beef kidney, which like I said earlier, you can get in supplement form. And for my vegans out there, fortified nutritional yeast. And the last deficiency that can be linked to hair thinning and hair loss is a protein deficiency. Now this is, you know, the least common out of all of them, especially in Western countries, because most of us eat enough protein rich foods, but I wanted to mention it anyway, just to bring awareness to it. Since your hair is primarily made up of protein, it makes sense that a lack of protein in the diet can affect the health of your hair. And since your hair is not an essential part of survival, whatever protein you are putting in the body, your body is gonna use that towards your, you know, your organs and your glands and your tissues for survival. And you do have to find a happy medium when it comes to protein intake. You don't want too much protein, but you also don't want too little. But the general guidelines suggest consuming up to 35% of your calories from protein. And a couple of bonus mentions that can also be linked to hair thinning and hair loss includes hormonal imbalances, especially when it comes to your thyroid and your adrenal glands and gut and absorption issues, meaning you're not absorbing your nutrients properly. Well, there you have it. Five nutritional deficiencies that can be linked to hair thinning and hair loss. Now, if you suspect that you have a deficiency, it's always a good idea to go get checked and that way you have a clear roadmap on where to begin. And if y'all like these types of informational videos, be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. But that's it for today. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.